Check, check, check. One, two, three, four. Check, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Check, check, One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. should be a good game out here today. Looking forward to seeing a rivalry. But we get a team that you and I have covered all season long. Should be fun. They last played each other a week ago with... We'd like to introduce the first team all MEAC player from North Carolina Central. Call me now. A fierce rivalry makes its way to Norfolk, Virginia as number four North Carolina A&T and number five North Carolina Central gets set to tip off day three of the MEAC tournament on Flow Hoops. Hello and welcome inside the scope. I'm Spencer Turkin alongside my partner, six-time MEAC tournament champion head coach Cy Alexander. Coach, we should have a fantastic ball game today. And now the top half of the bracket here in the MEAC women's tournament completely wide open after yesterday's upset. Number eight, Maryland Eastern Shore took down number one, Bethune-Cookman. Tell you what, it has been some exciting basketball games. 
and this one should be the best because it's a rivalry and these two teams just met a week ago. They certainly did. You know that the Lady Eagles, led by Paulina Afrie, would love to finish off the season sweep and win three in a row against the Lady Aggies. I'll tell you what, Afrie is an excellent basketball player, can get it done inside and out. Some of the things that the Lady Eagles need to do, one, they need to play with confidence because they just beat the Lady Aggies. And two, they need to get off to a quick start. One of the toughest things in all of basketball to do, win three games against your opponent. The Lady Aggies have won 20 of the last 23 against North Carolina Central. You know that Deja Winters is coming to end this two-game skid. Tell you what, Deja Winters can really light it up. She shoots the three exceptionally well. What the Aggies, Lady Aggies need to do is take advantage of their size. They need to play the game from inside out. And secondly, they need to get back to playing that swarming defense. It's number four, North Carolina a and and number five, North Carolina Central. It's the MEAC Women's Tournament, day three, coming up next on Flow Hoops. with you inside the Norfolk Scope Arena. It's day three of the MEAC Women's Tournament. North Carolina a and North Carolina Central coach. Two teams very, very familiar with each other. They just played a week ago and Lady Eagles were triumphant and uh, they're trying to do the old three in a row on the Lady Aggies. Could be tough, but uh, let's see what happens today. For the first time since joining the MEAC, North Carolina Central swept the regular season set between these two squads. Awfully impressive for Trisha Stafford Odom over at North Carolina Central. Tell you what, they got a great player in Freya. She she knows how to get it done. Uh, can go inside, can go outside. Just a, uh, a well-rounded player. Paulina Afrie and Jayla Jones-Pat in the center circle as we get set to tip things off. It's the matinee game here in Norfolk. Central will control and we'll get started. Day three on Flow Hoops. Maybe Aggies open up man to man. Atkins gonna have to get that ball to a free A to attack here early. She is the engine that makes this team go. Works down low, has that shot blocked by Jayla Jones Pack. And coach, you mentioned it in the open. The size that North Carolina A&T possesses, they have to use it on a possession basis. That hollow action between uh, the Sears and, and, and Leon Hill and uh, Jada Jones Pack. Walton will trigger. Here's Sunia McRae, the senior from Broadview, Illinois. She'll run the offense for the Lady Aggies. And that one will go out of bounds as Leon Hill couldn't corral it. Leon Hill, you'll see here throughout the game, one of the best off-ball defenders in the conference. I'll tell you what, she is so active with her length. She's always around the ball. That last time on defense, the Lady Eagles started in a 2-3 zone. Nice ball movement right now by the Lady Eagles with side ball screen action. Nine on the timer. The feed down low to Rivera, and that'll go out of bounds. So here in the opening minute, both teams struggling to get their footing early. Two consecutive turnovers by the Lady Eagles. Post feed a little long. Almost a, a turnover for the Lady Aggies. Got the ball on the bound, out of bounds on the baseline. See what kind of action they run. A little drop. Got 23 on the shot clock. It will be Lady Aggie basketball. Terrell Robinson, no stranger to the MEAC tournament, has a championship to his name. Now that this top half of the bracket is wide open without the Coon Cookman in the mix. What do you think the feelings are on both of these benches? Well, I tell you what, after watching the Lady Spartans play last night, they looked really, really good. So you, you, you're going to have to contend with them, e either one of these teams. a t with a reset shot clock. Here's Walton. And she walked. And I like to call 
Jasmine Walton, the Energizer Bunny, or a la Kurt Rambis with the glasses. North Carolina A&T has struggled with turnovers all season long side. 20.6 turnovers a game. And you can't win like that. And we've talked about it quite a bit all season long as far as the Lady Aggies are concerned. They've got to take care of the basketball. And they've got to play that hollow game with uh, Leon Hill and, and whoever's down low, either Jayla Jones Pack or Alexis Lashia. Here's Wilson, finds McCray. Jones Pack driving. Has it stripped away as neither team able to find the bottom of the cup yet. Wilson. Baseline jumper on the way from McCray won't go, and we have a foul. It'll go against Jayla Jones Pack. Over the back that time. You gotta try to work, not settle for being blocked out. That's a nice uh, shot of uh, head coach Terrell Robinson of the Lady Aggies. There's been talk of him moving up for other jobs over the years. He has stayed to build this program, though, into a perennial mid-major powerhouse. Atkins to the rack, misses. a t of course, beat Clemson this year. Had a one-point loss to the University of Miami. This is a squad that, at full strength, People were predicting some special things. Without CC4, though, have struggled down the stretch. Tell you what, they really have never been able to recover from losing CC4. She's a, a high major transfer who's very, very talented. And it took the Lady Aggies probably five or six games before they could understand how to play without her. Jump ball, and the arrow will favor a &T. And we have been less than sharp in these first uh, three minutes. Both teams struggling on the offensive end. Maybe it's good defense. This looks like two teams that know each other very well as Walton has a shot blocked by Rivera. Just played last week. And, and play it. This will be the third time in three weeks, possibly. North Carolina Central knocked off a and in Durham 65-52 a week ago. Before that, the two squads went to double overtime in Greensboro when North Carolina Central pulled off the shocker, 86 to 80. That was a heck of a basketball game. Hill from the elbow. And that's the shot that Leon Hill has to make. She's going to get that mid-range free throw line jump shot all game because the defense is going to back off and deter her from throwing the ball inside to Jones Pack. Shot just 34.7% from the field during the conference season this year. As North Carolina Central just went 9-7 and seven in MEAC play, trying to get this offense going. It has been a defensive battle. Into the corner, Locker lets it fly. Tried to bank it home, and it won't go. McCray lost it, got it back. Here's Wilson now. Drops it off down low to Hill. And someone finally scores. Nice pass that time. Kaya Wilson to Leon Hill. So North Carolina A&T coming into this one is the higher seed. Trying to improve to 20 wins on the campaign as we have a screen violation. 5.55 to go. North Carolina A&T leading it. Just two to nothing. And I tell you what, both te both teams seem to be struggling a little bit to find their offensive rhythm, so to speak. North Carolina Central with five turnovers already in, in, in five minutes. A turnover a minute. Here's Walton. Jones Pack backing down, gets doubled down, turns, fires, and misses. The rebound secured by the Lady Eagles. And here comes North Carolina Central breaking things out. To the corner. That shot won't go for Williams. Walton back the other way. Tries to go coast to coast and draws the shooting foul. And that was a nice transition push that time. But Keisha White kicked it over to Williams. Williams had a nice transition jumper. Just missed it. So Jasmine Walton will head to the stripe where she's shooting 55.3% on the season. And she plays with 
such energy. She gives maximum effort on, on each offensive and defensive possession. And she nails the first. Walton averaged 8.1 points per game in conference play. Went two for eight from the field at Central. As the young boy will check into the ball game. Two big free throws for Walton. A little pressure, 2-2-1. Two, two, it's the soft token pressure. Baseline jumper won't go, and Walton secures the board. Here's Deja Winters inside to LaSears. Backing down, off the glass, nothing doing. Hill stripped and fouled. Again, as we talked about in the opening, the, Aggies, the Lady Aggies need to play the game from inside out to suck the defense in and then pitch it back out and maybe you get a wide open three-point three shot. Leon Hill struggled from the stripe this year. Just a 44.9% free throw shooter. The Lady Aggies as a squad, pitiful. 58.9% shooting from the free throw line. They so far they're three for four, which is a good sign. Shutting out the Lady Eagles as we have broken the halfway mark of the first quarter. Again, uh, Lady Eagles are having difficulty finding their office. Nice move that time. And a blocking foul drawn Afrie. by Afrie with 4.50 to go. Here in the first quarter, North Carolina A&T leads it 5 nothing. We're back after this on Flow Hoops. At North Carolina Central University, we are a first choice premier institution. It's been a defensive battle here so far as North Carolina A&T shutting out North Carolina Central five to nothing in the quarterfinals of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Tournament. Both of these teams haven't played in a week, and when they did play, they saw each other. The rust, you can tell, is there. Lady Eagles 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Lady Aggies 1 for 9, shooting 11%. Now you get a free throw made by Afriye. Paulina Afriye, a 71.6% free throw shooter. First team all-conference selection. She split the pair, and here come the Lady Aggies. Hill leads it down low to Lassiers. Can't finish and cannot secure her own rebound, and she is grabbing that shoulder. That's been bothering her all season long. Afriye back on the other side, and she draws another trip to the line. That's the high-low action that I'm sure Coach Robinson is looking for. Alexis Lashier just got to finish that play. That was a nice pass by Leon Hill, and you got the all-conference player kind of taking over right now for the Lady Eagles, Paulina Afriye. Shot 52% from the field in conference play. Averaged a double-double. She is all that she is built up to be. She's, she's got the total package. So struggling from the free throw line a little bit here. Shooting 50%. Boston. The weave is on. Winters finds Bostic to run the offense. That one tipped, and it'll go out of bounds. It great, will be Lady Aggie basketball. Great, anti great anticipation that time by Faith Williams. Lady Eagles sticking with the 2-3 uh, zone, trying to take away the interior game of the Lady Aggies, making them beat you from the perimeter. Nine on the timer. Bostic has to do something. Walton, two to shoot. And the Lady Aggies stalled out. Shot clock awareness. You've got to be aware of what the time is. And that's something from the sideline that the coaching staff needs to make sure that the ladies are aware of that time they weren't. One made field goal in this ball game out of 14 attempted. Atkins. 
kicks it to the wing. White's triple. Off the heel, no good. A free A fights for the board. Nice offensive rebound that time by a free A. Lady Aggie's been in man, little horns action right here. Seven to shoot. Into the corner. Around the defender. That shot short from Williams. And North Carolina A&T can secure the rebound and get the kick ball to get themselves out of trouble. That was a heady play by Deja Winters. And Faith Williams is, is getting that little after, after dribble penetration for the Lady Eagles. Just can't knock it down right now. Lady Eagles are one for ten from the field. So the Lady Eagles have won both games this season against North Carolina A&T. However, the Lady Aggies have dominated the series of late winning 20 of the last 23. How did the Eagles overcome that in order to start their own streak? Winning the double overtime game in Greensboro, that gave them the confidence that they could play with the Lady Aggies, and it, it just kind of carried over to the second game because they played so close with about two weeks uh, in between games, and now you come up with the third game less than, less than, less than another week. Still a one-possession game here in Norfolk. Rivera rips the tray and ties the game. Big time shot by Rivera off the high post screen. McCray to the rack draws the foul. And that's exactly what North Carolina A&T didn't want to see. You hold North Carolina Central to one of seven from the field. And yet you were only able to score five points with 235 remaining in the first quarter. That is not the start you want to have offensively when you're playing such fantastic defense. You're doing a great job on the defensive end, but you can't, just can't put the ball in the basket. Really, neither team has, has, has excelled on the offensive end. One made field goal apiece. North Carolina A&T dominating on the glass, though. Plus five in the rebounding margin. As North Carolina A&T takes the lead. A free A. Kicks it out, and Atkins will reset. Maybe he was really looking to push the ball in that last offensive possession. That layup short, a free A secures the board. Leaves it for Pollock through the paint, nothing doing. And a free A will pull this out with seven on the shot clock. The senior. That'll go out of bounds. Solid defense by Alexis LeSears. Stood straight up. She did a job moving her feet that time and got position. Rule of vertic verticality. Baseline out of bounds. A free A lets it go. And it does not clank the rim, so the Aggies going the other way. Coast to coast. Bostic short on the iron. North Carolina Central seems content to run the shot clock down deep. Williams finds Pollock. That one almost stolen. Atkins drains the bucket. Nice pull up jump shot that time by Atkins. Steadied herself, held her follow through, knocked it down. Post feed, Jones passed. One dribble, the layup off the mark. And back the other way comes Pollock. Two on two. Doesn't wait for reinforcements. And it hurts. Going the other way. Jasmine Pollock, a little over anxious that time. Should have pulled it back. As you said, wait on the teammates. See if you can get the ball reversal and a nice shot on the weak side. Kennedy Boyd will check into the ball game for the first time today for Terrell Robinson, the University of North Carolina transfer. And if you look over on the sideline, I think that's uh, Alexis Lashier getting her shoulder worked on that you were just talking about. You are correct. It's another turnover for North Carolina A&T, the fifth of the afternoon. And that was just a lack of focus because she just threw it and, and she, she missed it. It, was, it had nothing to do with defense that time, just uh, not being focused. That would be a huge loss for North Carolina A&T if Alexis LeSears can't go the rest of the day. She's got her jersey off right now. We got that shoulder wrapped. One minute to play in the quarter. Post feed. 
Brown loses her balance and she traveled. Brown just uh, got a little antsy that time on the block and really nev never gathered herself and uh, consequently that call for a walk. So the Lady Aggies trying to get something going here. Scoreless for the last two minutes. Cross court, McCray. Back to Walton. Runs the baseline, can't finish. Here comes White. To the hole. And we'll head to the free throw line. Nice drive that time in transition by Keisha White. North Carolina Central this season, 12th in the country in free throw attempts. They do a tremendous job getting to the hole and drawing contact. Shayla Nelson into the ball game. Keisha White, a 73.4% free throw shooter. She's been to the line 124 times, making 91 of them. Second shot goes. Two three zone has been effective, keeping the ball out of the paint for the Lady Eagles. Boyd into the corner for Walton. Runs the baseline, too strong. A tie up, and it'll favor AT. That's good hustle that time by Shayla Nelson, the freshman who just entered the game from. Uh, Goose Creek, South Carolina. Shot clock is off. Nelson can't finish, but we'll head to the line. And Nelson for the year, only been to the free throw line two times, made one of them shooting 50%. Big free throws for the freshman. A lot of trust. From Terrell Robinson right now, inserting a freshman into a tight tournament game. And she misses the first. Well, she's due to make this one, based on the stats. If I didn't give her the announcement, <laughs> jinx. You didn't. Yeah, I did. Finally did something right in my career. For the first time ever. <laughs> right. <did not laughs> provide the announcer, Jinx. Right. You, you have broken the curse. No. <laughs> It's been a long time, man. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Central back the other way. Brown fighting for it, and it'll go out of bounds off of North Carolina A&T. Three seconds left in the quarter. And if you're Trisha Stafford Odom, you're calling your best baseline out of bounds play right here. And that's number three. She just held up three fingers. Looked like a, a box set. Watch for a cross screen and a pin down. Up screen right there. Rivera from downtown. And that'll do it for the first quarter of action. North Carolina Central on top of North Carolina A&T, 8-7. We're back after this on Flow Hoops. Your success matters here. You will push forward. You will achieve. You will finish. Because that's what Aggies do. That was an interesting quarter. As North Carolina Central went 2 for 14 from the field. North Carolina a t went 1 for 14. And the defensive have come to play. Tell you what, uh, great defense. But in actuality inept offense on the part of both teams. One team one for 14, the other team two for 14 from the field. You're the coach, you can say that. <laughs> a free A. The bounce pass feed on the baseline to Atkins, she'll pull it out. White gets the screen. Ten to shoot. White to the hole. Buckets. Tough layup that time by Keisha White. Here's Walton the other way. 
That layup won't go for Micaiah Wilson. And North Carolina Central secures the board. Good ball movement that time by the Lady Eagles. A free A. Bounce pass feed to Rivera in traffic for two. Nice pocket pass from a free A to Rivera. Post feed for Jones Pack. Backing down. Turns. Fires. Left it short. Good move by Jones Pack. Did exactly what you just said. Left it short. That one won't go either. Some pretty ball movement though on the last few possessions from North Carolina Central. Yeah, the Lady Eagles really are moving the ball from side to side really well. Nice hollow action that time. Nelson. Shot blocked. And that'll go off of North Carolina A&T as Samia McCray got a fingertip on it. And the Lady Aggies now one for 17 from the field. Tell you what, they, they get the ball down low. They just got to finish. The, the, the idea is, is they're taking advantage. This is what we talked about in, the, in, in our opening. They have to play the game inside out, but they got to finish some plays on the block. What can you do if you're Terrell Robinson right now to get your team out of this funk? White to the rack, misses. You, you got to be positive with them right now because uh, the, the, the execution, the, the execution, they hear the turnover, that, that's not good. Pull up jumper, rims down for Rivera, and a timeout taken by Terrell Robinson. And that's a very good timeout. He needed it because right now, the Lady Aggies are getting sloppy. We'll take a timeout on Flow Hoops back after this. Welcome back out to the Norfolk Scope Arena. North Carolina Central doubling up North Carolina A&T, 14-7. As Terrell Robinson saw enough and took a time out here to try and spark his troops. North Carolina A&T, a season for them which started with so much promise. C.C. Foy, the preseason player of the year, tore her ACL in the game against Coppin State. And this squad just really has not been the same since. Has not been the same since. And sitting here looking at the stats right now, they're shooting 5.6% from the field. One for 18. And uh, two for three right now. I mean, you see the Lady Eagles in the two, three. Right, right, actually, it's a one, one, three that they're showing. And uh, hopefully... Uh, from the Lady Aggie standpoint, uh, Coach Robinson got these young ladies to wake up. Maybe the game was a little too early for them. Entry feed off the hands of Jones Pack and corralled by North Carolina Central. Atkins feeds it down low. Here's a free hit, turning, firing, and scoring. What a big time move. Don't be so mean, young lady. Paulina Afriye. All conference, give me AC player. Elite players have that sixth sense where they know that the defender is a step off. She showed it there. Showed it right there. That was a big time spin move. Great foot movement. And that's a good sight for the Lady Aggies to see Alexis Lashier back in the ball game with a shoulder wrap. At least she's in the game. The Sears. Cross court. Now into the corner for Winters. The Seton Hall transfer rips the jumper. And it goes. And that's what she does. And she's been silent. Oh, nice run in the court. A free A draws the foul after North Carolina AT ended a scoreless drought at two minutes and 37 seconds. Nice ability to, to run what we call rim run. Just go from rim to rim as fast as you can go, like a wide receiver. Catch the touchdown pass, see if you can make the free throws. And coach, that has to do with your favorite ability in basketball. Effort. Effort. Exactly. It's the, that that's I mean you don't have to even just be a track star to do that. Just run. Splits the pair.
Three minutes gone by here in the second quarter. The feed down low to Nelson. That one will roll in. She got the friendly spin that time. Now North Carolina Central has picked up the pace. That's a charge. That'll wipe off the bucket. What a great charge taken by Lucia, even with the bad shoulder. She, she accepted the body contact. That's wanting to win right there. That was Dasman Casey who came in a little out of control. And Alexis Lucia is trying to extend her career. Lady Eagles showing the 1 3 1. Couldn't hold on to it. Back the other way comes White. Crossover through the lane and drew the hand check. And see the lady Aggies need to be able to take care because they're actually playing Keisha White on the back line of that defense. And she's only 5'4", and Lasier is listed at 6'3". Coach, now seems like a good time to remind everybody that if you had plans to come up to Norfolk, you should probably cancel them. Flow Sports will be the exclusive way that you can watch this tournament. As that shot is blocked up until the championship game. As it has been closed to the public due to the coronavirus and COVID-19. That one knocked out on the baseline. The coronavirus is taking over the world of college basketball with a lot of tournaments being either suspended or played without attendance. That shot short. And how about that, Coach? Anissa Rivera grabbed that board with three Lady Aggies surrounding her. That, that tells you she wants it just a little bit more than the Lady Aggies. We still end up with a tie-up to see if the Lady Aggies can get something out of this. That was a bad pass. Winters, the runner, short. Grabs her own board, though, and it will be a 20-second reset. From downtown. Rebound with Sears. Can't put it back. That's three misses in a row. Make it four, but she draws the foul. There's a lid on the basket for the Lady Aggies. Sears for the day has not been to the free throw line, has four rebounds though, doing an excellent job on the glass. Let's see if she can culminate and, and reward herself for her effort. That one up and in. Shot good. Good job by Alexis Sears. And here comes Kishay White to lead the charge. Atkins feeds it down low to a free A. No good on that one, and she got poked in the face. Great execution by the Lady Eagles with a little back screen. And the lob over the top. We just didn't finish the play. And now a foul on the Sears. Coach, too many missed layups for North Carolina a and They're getting the ball down low, but not finishing. 3 of 25 from the field right now, 12%. The Eagles aren't much better, 6 of 22, 27%. That's why you got to, even as bad as the Aggies and Lady Aggies have played, they are only down 4 points, 17-13. One sec. Atkins. Dribbles into trouble. And it's stolen away. Ninth turnover of the day for the Lady Eagles. Winters pulls up. And drains the long two. That's what she does. She is an excellent mid-range 
jump shooter. Two-point deficit. North Carolina A&T on a 6-0 run. That is snapped by White. Nice little kiss off the glass. Keisha White. The feed down low. LaSears turns, fires, and one opportunity. And again, that high-low action is the bread and butter for the Lady Aggies. So Alexis Lassiers, two for two from the line, make it three for three. We got a one point game. First ever season sweep of North Carolina A&T for North Carolina Central this year. But one of the hardest things to do in college basketball, Coach, beat a team three times. Just always say if a team got beat three times, the other team was just better than them that particular year. Atkins. Slowing things down. Free shot blocked, and it'll go out of bounds. Good defensive position that time by Lucia. Held her ground and made the shot difficult for a free. And we have a whistle and a foul on the floor. Looks like it might have been on Leon Hill. So North Carolina a t has fought back to trail by one. Down by as many as seven. And that might have been the third personal foul on, on Leon Hill. Is that what you have? I have three fouls on Leon Hill. Big. Keisha White trains another one. And give her a lot of credit. She's playing tough in there around that basket among the Giants. That is not easy for a guard to go down there and play so well. At 5-4. She's got seven points. Yes. Winters. That shot short. Here comes Atkins. Stops and kicks it out, and the Lady Eagles will reset. Bounce pass feed to Brown. Turns, fires, and scores. Nice step through move that time by Brown. Nice little post pass. And a timeout taken by North Carolina Central. As the Lady Eagles have been able to keep this lead despite not playing their best basketball. And again, uh, we're talking about teams needing to understand one, two words, or three words, survive and advance. And that's what this Middle Eastern Athletic Tournament is all about, and that's what uh, most mid-major Division I tournaments, one bid leagues, which the MEAC is, win or go home. There's no tomorrow. There's no practice tomorrow if you lose unless you happen to get a NIT or WNIT bid or... Well, that'll go to Bethune Cookman. Yes, no doubt. So that that's, eliminates that. McCray, nothing doing. A free A beats the Lady Aggies to the basketball. Here's Demery. Bounce pass to a free A. Into the corner. Ball worked around. Anderson has it. Back to Atkins. Nice pocket pass. And a walk. That was a nice pocket pass, Atkins, to a free A, but free A didn't gather herself. 
and uh, obviously it's called for a traveling violation. North Carolina Central leads it by five. The Lady Eagles have shot seven of 12 here in the second quarter. North Carolina a and struggles from the field continue to score 15 here in the second. And another turnover. That's 10 today for the Lady Aggies. When you had the ball in, in the person that you want to have the ball in, in her hands, Deja Winters. Just had a little mishap off the bounce. A free A. Over to Anderson, short corner jumper. Off the heel, no good. Lady Aggies break things out. Nice bounce pass to the wing. Three on the way is good. Terrific transition offense for the Lady Aggies. And that's when you get a chance to shoot a nice three-point shot, which Winters did. Nice little ball reversal. Demery. Down low to a free end. Ten on the shot clock for Demery. Calls to the screen. Uses it. Six to work. Drops nice it off to a free end. Down low. Count the bucket and one. A strong take for Paulina Afriye. We give a lot of credit to Demery. And she, she threaded the needle on that pass in tight quarters as you see the replay. Paulina Afriye, three of six from the line tonight. Seven points, six rebounds. She makes that one. And every time it looks like the Lady Aggies are going to complete this comeback, the Lady Eagles find a way to get a bucket. Exactly. Boston, off the window, too strong. And we have a whistle and a foul. And we'll go against Anderson. So North Carolina Central with the five-point lead. Walton gets it to Nelson, who is fouled. That was a nice seal that time by the freshman. Shayla Nelson sealed and uh, created a lot of space. And was able to create the foul. She's at the line now, shooting two. And uh, she's one for two so far to, for the afternoon. So Shayla Nelson able to make the first. It is pretty amazing that the Lady Aggies are even in this ball game, having gone 6 of 31 from the field. Yes. But again, you're talking about the uh, Lady Eagles haven't been great on the offensive end. Stays true to her 50%. Yeah. Williams. One minute to go in the half. Here's Demery running baseline. Gets trapped. Kicks it out. That shot into the hands of a free A. It'll get blocked with four on the timer. And the Lady Eagles will have to run a baseline out of bounds for a short possession. Right play at the right time. That one knocked away. And now two seconds on the shot clock. You want to see if you can get a cross screen. You need to get the ball in the lane. We'll get a little elbow jump shot. Demery turns, fires that one way short. That's not where you want to get it. If you're both of these coaches, what are you telling your teams at the half? You, you've got to settle down, focus on your, your, your shot, 
keep running your offense so you can get high, get easy shots. When you're not making shots, you want to get easier shots. And the 2-3 zone by the Lady Eagles has been somewhat effective because the Lady Aggies, for the most part, just can't make a shot. We have a whistle and a foul. Microphones picked up there Terrell Robinson. He's starting to get a little frustrated yeah. on the bench. Even though he's pretty much sit down on the bench type of coach. But uh, two very different coaching styles on display right. here today. Mm -hmm. That shot good for McCray. She makes the second one. As poorly as the Lady Aggies have played, they will be only two points down, potentially going into halftime. That one good. No pressure now by the Lady Aggies. Three second differential. Atkins working with a slow pace. Central trying to hold for a solid final possession of the half. Here's Brown. Feeds it down low, mishandled. And we have a whistle and a jump ball. The arrow will favor North Carolina A&T, so another turnover. That's 11 in the first half for the Lady Eagles. And now the shot clock is off for the Lady Aggies to hold for the final shot. Here's Boston. Four seconds to work with. Nelson has to do something. Gets rid of it and draws the foul with 23 seconds remaining. Tell you what, the freshman, Shayla Nelson from Goose Creek, South Carolina, having a real solid first half for the Lady Aggies. She can make these two. You're going at halftime. Leon Hill and Alexis Lassiers both in foul trouble, leading to Shayla Nelson heading into the ball game. Makes the first. She's three of five on the day from the strike. Coming out party, Shayla Nelson. The Lady Aggie shooting 75% from the line here in the first half. She makes them both. And this game is tied. Heading into the locker room. What a game of runs. The Lady Aggies have held North Carolina Central scoreless for the final buck 39. To even things out before the intermission. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this. It's the quarterfinals of the MEAC tournament on Flow Hoops. Town Bank, serving others, enriching lives. Back out at the Norfolk Scope Arena, North Carolina Central and North Carolina AT knotted up at 26 here in the first quarterfinal matchup of day three. In the MEAC Women's Tournament, Spencer Turkin now joined by Colonel Christopher Shaw of the U.S. Marines. Colonel, appreciate you being here with hey, us today. how you doing? I'm doing all right. We'll, we'll exhibit good hygiene. Yeah, there, there we go. Is. A little elbow bump here. Uh, first off, we appreciate you being a sponsor uh, of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Tournament. But what is your role with the Marines? Well, currently I'm a, uh, a staff judge advocate, which is basically a general counsel for one of the three-star generals that... Um, owns a part of the Marine Corps. Uh, so in that role, what are you doing on a daily basis? On a daily basis, I'm dealing with ethics issues. I'm dealing with military justice issues. I'm dealing with um, weapons reviews on what weapon systems we can use and what weapon systems we can't use. Uh, so how did you get involved and, and make the decision to serve our country? Well, for me, it, it started very early. Um, I'm a graduate of the Naval Academy. Love HBCUs, um, <laughs> but I went a different route. Um, and after, after uh, graduating from Navy, went into the Marine Corps, uh, served as an infantry officer, uh, and then um, I was sent to law school. Wow. So what's the importance of this partnership between the Marines and the Mideastern Athletic Conference? I mean, the, the reality is, is that the Mideast um, Athletic Conference is all about making that student athlete, preparing that student athlete for the game of life. And the Marine Corps is, we're looking for a few good men 
and we're looking for a few good women to lead the Marine Corps. So taking the college student athlete and making that person into a scholar warrior to lead the Marine Corps of the future is why we're here. Uh, is that something looking for student athletes that the Marine Corps focuses on because of their physical abilities? It's both because of their fi physical abilities, but also their mental agility and the fact that they understand about being on teams and leading teams. So you know, when you think of the Marine Corps, it's a diverse organization on the, on the, on the ground floor, but when we look up top, it's, it's less diverse. And being able to partner with HBCUs to bring in more diverse talent to lead that Marine Corps is what we need to do. Is that the most exciting part about this partnership to you, knowing that this can help create some diversity at the top of the Marine Corps? Without a doubt. And the reality is, is that we get graduates from HBCUs all the time. Uh, two notable ones, uh, Valon, Captain uh, Valon Earhart, who I think you interviewed yesterday, who was a lawyer in the Marine Corps, um, who went to Bethune-Cookman, and also Captain uh, Noel Sitt, who graduated from Bethune-Cookman and is about to become a cyber warrior wow. um, with the Marines. So we've done it in the past. We have to do a little bit better in that area, um, and that's why we're here. Uh, so the Marine Corps has had a number of popular slogans throughout the year, uh, throughout the years, whether it's honor, valor, fidelity, by sea and by land. Uh, what's the slogan that you find yourself living by every day? Really, it's, it's, it's no better friend, uh, no worse enemy. The Marine Corps, we are here to fight the country's battles. Um, we're here to make Marines. Um, and everyone out there needs to know that if you're, if you're a friend, if you're an ally, we are your, your best friend. And also, if you're someone that wants to take something away from the United States or take something away from our fellow Marines, we will be your worst enemy. Uh, is that a responsibility that you find yourself in awe that, that, that falls on your shoulders every day? It's, a, it's, it's something that falls on my shoulders, but it's something that falls on all of my brothers and sisters that are also in the Marine Corps. And we shoulder it well. Have you had a chance yet to participate in any of the uh, events surrounding the MEAC tournament? Uh, well, actually, earlier today, I attended the Hall of Fame induction ceremony where um, four just outstanding uh, former student athletes that then became coaches in MEAC um, were, were, were inducted in the Hall of Fame. And to hear their stories about what it took for them to become student athletes, what they did on the athletic field, and then them coming back to those schools and serving as coaches, transforming next generation Young, young men and women into strong individuals was just inspiring. Uh, March Madness, I know that there's a little uncertainty right now, but typically a very exciting time uh, around the country. Uh, what does March Madness mean to you? Uh, what, what, what does March Madness mean to me? It means watching some good basketball. <laughs> well, Colonel Christopher Shaw, we appreciate your time here in Norfolk. We're glad that you could join us here courtside for a terrific basketball game so far. Hoorah. Thank you. 26-26, North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T. We're back with the second half play-by-play -play from the Norfolk Scope Arena coming up after these messages on Flow Hoops. The athletes for the game of life.
six all here in Norfolk. North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T getting set for the second half of play. Coach. Zero. Who can come out of there shooting funk? The earliest will eventually win this ball game. Is that where previous tournament experience or North Carolina A&T comes into play? Well, it, it'll come into play with Coach Rob. Whether it actually come into play with these new ladies, it, it's something different because this is a whole new crew of young ladies that he has that you know, have had some tournament success, but actually haven't gone to the NCAA tournament. Right now, Deja Winters, the, the transfer, Jayla Jones, Pack, Leon Hill, that Hilo inside game has got to take an effect. On the flip side of that, Keisha White has done an excellent job for the Lady Eagles, and you, you've got to get Paulina Afrie getting it going. Both teams receiving their final instructions as we get set for the second half of play. Neither squad lining it up from beyond the arc, but they really haven't done that all season long. The MIAC might have been the worst three-point shooting team in the country when it comes to teams. North Carolina A&T led the conference in three-point shooting. Shot 29.8% from downtown in the 16 conference regular season games this year. And that's not a lot. Look, look, look for uh, somebody like to energize the bunny for the Lady Aggies, Jasmine Walton, to step up and have a big second half. Good man to man defense right there by uh, Micaiah Wilson. A nice, excuse me, nice cross screen trying to get that ball inside early. To the all-conference player, Frie. Atkins to trigger. A lot of cross screens that time. Atkins would tend to work. House pass feed of Frie kicks it to the wing. Three on the way for White. It's good. Beautiful inside-out action. Definitely nice. No look pass of free A to White. And she paid her off with a nice three point shot. And you got a foul away from the basket. Sania McCray with a little push off. And that'll get Terrell Robinson up off the bench. That is a sight you don't see often. He was just telling, I think, Walton that that was her weak side help. Atkins. They really just trying to play a two-man game right now with the free A in on the block. Atkins kicks it to the wing. Three on the way. That one long from White. And now the Aggies are in transition. That pass from Wilson too strong. A little too much mustard on that pass that time. And here's the sight. You, you bring in the Sears out of the game and putting the freshman back in. Shayla Nelson, who really gave Coach Robinson some quality minutes in the first half. Scored six points, went four for six from the free throw line in that first half. Definitely quality minutes. Rivera. Ten seconds to go, turns, fires, and draws the foul. And what the Lady Eagles have decided to do is forget about all this ball movement. We're going to go straight to our horses down low, Rivera and Afriye. They just playing two-man basketball right now. 
So Rivera to the stripe. He's been not going for the line in the first half. Thinks the first one. 71.4% free throw shooter. Had a terrific conference season. Averaged 13.4 points per game. She has a nice, well-rounded game. Good-looking shot. Good-looking form on her shot. North Carolina Central has come out on a 5-0 run to begin the third quarter. And that's the way you want to start the second half. The lead pass to Rivera. Pulls up from seven out. Nothing doing. White gets tied up, and the arrow will favor the Lady Aggies. If Keisha White, a little five-foot-four spark plug for the Lady Eagles, a lot of credit. She's in there battling among the trees. And she actually came up with that rebound that time. Five-point lead, 31-26, Lady Eagles. 2-3 zone now. The feet inside Jones Pack around the defender up and in. Nice move that time by Jayla Jones Pack. From downtown, rims out, no good from Rivera. And that is not the Lady Eagles game. No. Boston feeds it to Jones Pack. Rivera knocked it away. Here comes White on the run through the paint. That one too strong. Good defense that time by Chantel Bostic. McCray draws the foul. Great defense in transition by Miss Bostic on Keisha White. Caused her to miss that layup as you see right there. She drew the foul. Sania McCray, a 69.1% free throw shooter. She's had some, some big games for the Lady Aggies this year. Made some, a lot of clutch shots. Had nice form on her free throws. And the Lady Aggies right back into this thing. One point ball game. That's what a 4 5 seed. 4 5 game should be. Nice hollow action. Rivera. Nice the first layup goes. 3 8 to Rivera. Winters to the freshman, Nelson. And there is just a lid on the bucket for the Lady Aggies today. Seven of 33 from the field. Quakes the 21 cent shooting. But you're right, you only need one possession down and you're still shooting the ball that bad. Jones Pack down the lane. And draws the foul. And she might have gotten away with a little walk that time. God damn, man. Bringing Leon Hill back in. I think she has three fouls, yes. A big gamble at this point. And I like to call Zayla Jones pack. Her free throw motion reminds me of Chief Robert Parrish, former center of the Boston Celtics. He has a little hitch on the shot like Robert Parrish used to have. So back the other way comes North Carolina Central. Here's Keisha White. Got 10 points today. Atkins. Entry feed to a free A. Nice back to go. Atkins. And she walked. Atkins got a little... A little flustered that time. Forgot to put the ball on the deck. That was they, the the uh, Lady Eagles ran the Carolina secondary that time. Dean Smith made that play famous. Jones Pack backing down gets doubled and it squeaks out. Here comes White through the paint, slipped, got the shot off, but it was off the mark. She gets to the rim. Pretty regularly, just hadn't finished a lot. Ball loose, and we have a foul. Six oh nine to play 
here in the third. Got to stop in the action right now. What is the problem? They need the mop. Okay. Let's have a wet spot right under the basket. Oh, it's under the opposite basket. A wide one-two set. Baseline out of bounds, thrown away. Maybe Aggies have been in it primarily man-to-man -man all, all game. Nice drop off and a nice big time block by Jayla Jones Pat. Back the other way. Here comes Bostic. And she draws the foul with 546 to go. Great interior defense that last time for the Lady Aggies. Here we have on the replay. And there's the block. Here's Bostic. Chance to tie or take the lead for the Lady Aggies. Down the lane, Jones Pack. Off the glass, won't go. Good time rebound that time by Freya in a crowd. Freya. Surveying. Kicks it to the wing. Williams lets it fly. That one long. And Hill with the board and a jump ball is called. The arrow in the direction of North Carolina Central. Was the replay that quick tie up. Close the gate play out of the box set. Trying to free up. Williams. A free A. Underneath has it blocked. And a travel is called. Two blocks in a row by Jayla Jones Pack, but uh, she got a little antsy when she blocked it. We've got a two point ball game here in Norfolk. We're back after this on Flow Hoops. Who does? Help us connect Hampton Roads. Back with you here in Norfolk, a tight one in the quarterfinals of the MEAC tournament. North Carolina Central trying to win three straight against North Carolina A&T, something that the Lady Eagles have never done before since joining the conference. Excuse me, it would be a big accomplishment for the Lady Eagles to do that. To the wing for Williams. Let's it fly. Buckets. Big time shot for Faith Williams. That was a fourth three point shot, and she finally canned one. From downtown, the response goes. There was the answer that time by Cynthia McCray, and she has done that all year for the Lady Aggies. Down the lane, a free A, high off the window and in. That's an all-conference player right there, folks. Hill, down low to Jones Pat. Hill, the board, can't finish. We have a whistle. And it looks like Brown is hurt. It's Kayana Brown, sophomore from uh, Yanceyville, North Carolina. Did she get hit in the face or something? That's what it looks like behind the ball. And that's why Trisha Stafford Odom was so right. upset. Right. They had advantage. Whistle and a foul. Three 
354 left to go in the third quarter. Rivera puts it up. Wide left. And I don't think that's the shot that Coach Stafford Odom wanted. That was the shot with the shot clock running down. There was still 18 seconds left to go. Here's McCray. To the rack through traffic. And she walked. Central basketball. One for set low by the Lady Eagles. The kick to the wing for Williams. Let's it fly. That one long off the iron. Nice block out that time by Jayla Jones Pack on Paulina Afriye. Winters. Bounce pass. To her former teammate at Seton Hall, and that one gone. Again, the Lady Eagles have gone to a lot of just isolation sets. That time was 41, which means a 1 4 pass to the four man. Rivera's fadeaway won't go. Bounce pass back to her, and she draws a trip to the charity strike. Nice give and go that time, a free A to Rivera. So Anissa Rivera, just a freshman, averaged 13.4 points per game in conference play this year. She's got a bright future ahead bright of her. Future. Took a free throw stroke. Kicks the lead back up to six. Here's Wilson. Lady Aggies went to their Princeton set that time. Jasmine Walton took it all the way to the rim. Bump and a travel. Coach Stafford Odom did not like the call. The official is explaining it to her. 2.07 to go. North Carolina Central out in front by six. Now a block down low in the restricted area. So that'll put Mikhail Wilson on the line. No, uh, hadn't been to the line yet today. A 62.1% free throw shooter. She makes the first. Free throws could be very, very important in this ball game as you come down to the last five minutes in the fourth quarter. North Carolina A&T shooting 77.3% from the line. That rebound snagged by a free hit. Atkins to the rack and draws the infraction. To be Atkins' first trip to the line. Nice dribble drive that time to create the contact. So, Zaria Atkins to the stripe. 
and she misses. That one goes. So 41-35. North Carolina Central. Trying to do what many at the beginning of the year thought would be impossible. And that's what happens when you lose a star player like C C4. Nice drive that time. Jayla Jones pack. Swing move, step through, and attack the rim. Good denial by, by Wilson. Here's White. North Carolina Central taking its time. White throws it up, and it won't go. He has that little scoop shot down. Just missed it that last time. Cross court for Winters. Around the defender, puts up the three, short. And a free A goes up strong. Oh, great hustle that time by De De Deja Winters. She came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Missed the three ball on this end. Hustled to get back. That's great effort that time. That's championship effort by Deja Winters. Casey the trigger. That one knocked out. All of North Carolina Central University's Baseline out of bounds sets are tight. You have to have pinpoint passing. The lob ahead. And we have a tie up. The arrow will go with North Carolina AT. And now you're starting to see Deja Winters pick up that intensity. She certainly is doing a, a good job of giving that effort that's necessary to pull a close game out like this one is. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Four-point ball game. Here's Walton. Has an open baseline. And finishes. There was a breakdown that time. Who was guarding who? As far as the Lady Eagles were concerned. concerned. Walton was wide open. That shot blocked. And we have a foul down low. And all of a sudden, it's a one-possession ball game, Coach. It's been like that. The whole half. Yep, 4-5. The Lady Eagles make two or three bad plays. Lady Aggies take advantage. And you back to a one-point ball game. And then the Lady Eagles take it right back, back up to a three-possession game. It's been like that the whole game. What can the Lady Eagles do to separate themselves a little bit more? Make free throws, one, which they just did not do. And two, I think you need to play through Rivera and Afriye. Kiana Brown will check back into the game. Nice piece of coaching right there by Stafford Odom, getting Afriye out. Get an extra minute with the uh, quarter about to end and then get her right back in with around nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Jones packed with some bully basketball. She's going to work on that little free throw lane line drive move off the bounce. Seven seconds to go in the quarter. To the corner, Casey, triple, won't go, rebound to Jones, hack, and that'll do it for the third period. A one-point ball game as we come down the stretch. We're back after this timeout on Flow Hoops. You will push forward. You will achieve. You will finish because that's what Aggies do. Back in Norfolk, North Carolina Central on top of North Carolina A&T, 42-41. As the Lady Eagles hold the advantage despite going four of 17 from the field in the third quarter. This should be an excellent 
last quarter, the key to this last quarter for the Lady Aggies, Kendasia Winters, and Jayla Jones Pack get it going, and maybe Sienna McCray make a few shots, and or for the Lady Eagles, can Afriye and Rivera continue to dominate on the offensive end. They're looking hard for Jayla Jones Pack on the post up and the ball screen. McCray tries to drop it off down low and it's batted away, but Leon Hill in there with the steal. With long arms, great anticipation by Leon Hill. Jones Pack drains the bucket, and North Carolina A&T fights back to take the lead. Nice poise and patience by the Lady Aggies as Jayla Jones Pack has come to life in the second half. Casey finds a free A, battling, gets her own board. Drops it off to White. Reverse layup goes. She knows how to work that basket. The little five plug. Keisha White. Nice reverse layup that time. Jones Pack. Turns. Fires. Scores. She's going to work. Don't be so mean, young lady. She's got 11. All in the second half. Getting it done. That pocket pass goes out of bounds. Hands ready. And they weren't that last time. I hadn't said that since I stopped coaching. <laughs> it appears as if the Lady Eagles are now going into this half court 1-3-1 one, one, trap. See if they can take Jayla Jones pack out of her. And actually, she just came out of the game to get a rest before she comes back for the last five minutes, I'm sure. Winters. To the wing for McCray. Let's it fly. That one won't go. Both of these teams are going to start taking their possessions deep into the shot clock. Owen set. Atkins nice has her shot denied. Shotgun. Shayla Delson and the Lady Aggies end up with the ball. You see it on replay? What a block. Into the corner. Trap wasn't hard enough. If you're going to be in this defense, when you get the ball, you need to trap hard. Beautiful pass by the freshman. And we have a whistle and a push. <laughs> North Carolina Central has made just one of its last nine from the field. You go back to that two man game action with. Frie and Rivera. Williams draws the foul as two shots. Deja Winter is a little too aggressive there on the defense. First shot will go. <laughs> Second one rolls out. We got a tie ball game, Spence. 7 15 to go in the final quarter. Lady Eagles sticking with the 1 3 1 half court trap. Pull up jumper. Beautiful shot from Sunia McRae. She's 
has a knack to make big shots, does McCray for the Lady Aggies. And Deja Winters prevents that pass from being completed. To the wing. A free A. Triple down on. Kicks it out to Rivera. Step back three. Way off the mark. Six twenty-eight to go. North Carolina AT leads it by a pair. And that probably wasn't the shot that Stafford, Coach Stafford Odom wanted from Rivera. North Carolina A&T with 21 turnovers today. This would be a good time to call a timeout to get the shot that you want. You're down two, but she's going right to a free A. To the wing, White, three for the lead. No good. And what a defensive play by Keisha White. Kicks it off the glass. That's her thing, that little underhand scoop shot. She really has that down. Easy money for Keisha White. Hill finds a cutting Winters. Draws the foul. Nice backdoor action that time by Deja Winter. As you see Winters crashing hard. Earning a trip to the line. Deja Winters, seven points on the season. A 78% free throw shooter. Miss Winters has had an excellent game. She kept the Aggies, Lady Aggies, close in the first half. Second one good. And so yeah. the Lady Aggies back up by two. Substitutes coming in the ball game. Jayla Jones Pack goes out to get a much needed breather. And you got Micaiah Wilson in. Cynthia McCray. Nice back door look. White finishes. Great pass from Atkins to White from the backdoor cut. The feed down low with Sears can't handle it. And Keisha White will lead the Eagle flock down the floor with a chance to take the lead. Atkins bounce pass to a free A around the defender. Can't finish. Tons of contact, and the Lady Aggies come away with the basketball. Here's LaSears, and she walked. Got the ball too far from the hoop with 4.53 to go in this one. We're tied at 49. We're back after this on Glow Hoops. Diversity, we are a first choice premier institution. The 4-5 game between two heated rivals tied up at 49 as we come down the stretch in Norfolk, Virginia. It's the quarterfinals of the MEAC tournament. Coach, what a ball game we've had so far. It hasn't been the prettiest, but it's been entertaining. I'll tell you, that's just what I was about to say, Spence. You took my, you must have been reading my mind. It hasn't been the prettiest, but you couldn't ask for a better competitive game at 49 all 453 left to go in the fourth quarter two in-state rivals plan to survive and advance in the conference tournament every possession counts from here on in Looks like the lady Eagles is gonna milk some clock and go one four with uh, Atkins handling the basketball a free a the feed down on Rivera. Kicks it out. White. 
towards the hole. Drops it off. Williams, three ball. There was some contact there. A&T able to dig it out and take it the other way. Here's Bostic. Jones packing the ball back in the game for the Lady Aggies. McCray. The layup. Can't finish, but we'll head to the line for two. Gray's five of six so far this afternoon in the free throw line. And, and she is a player who does not mind taking the big shot. And she's made quite a few all season. Missed that one for the Lady Aggies. What a nice way to come down the stretch for such an important game. Makes them. The winner of this game would get um, Maryland, Maryland Eastern, Eastern Shore, Shore right? the eight seed, which upset Bethune Cookman. They played almost a perfect game yesterday in upsetting the defending champs. It was a 61-55 victory over the top seed in the tournament, BCU. I'll tell you, watching the games yesterday, Spence, uh, I was highly impressed with with uh, the Norfolk State Lady Spartans. They looked outstanding in talking to the athletics director in between games yesterday. He said to me that was the best he had seen the Lady Spartans play all year. They put together uh, a outstanding game and effort offensively, defensively, defensively. They were clicking on all cylinders. Really, since Norfolk State came into this building and knocked off North Carolina A&T in the semifinals last year of this tournament, the Lady Spartans have been fantastic. Jones Pack fighting down low. That shot won't go. Brown secures the rebound. Nice post double that time by the Lady Eagles on Jones Pack. She did not see the second defender coming. She caught her off guard. White. Pulls the trigger and drains the tray. Central back up. 52 to 50. Keisha White now has 19 points on the day. Playing with a lot of guts this afternoon. McCray, pull up jumper over the rim. Jones Pack saves it into the back of the backboard and it's a turnover. The 25th giveaway of the afternoon. Not a stat you want to be proud of. When you really think about it, Cy, 20.6 turnovers a game. And yet the Lady Aggies have won 19 basketball games. They play great defense and they got a nice inside out combination. They just normally look bigger than everybody. With uh, the Shears, Jayla Jones Pack. White shot blocked. Good defense that time. Anytime you get a, a three-point shot block is a bad shot. That was always my take on it. Well, that was nice of you being a Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. I mean, that was my take as a coach. You, you got the three-point shot block. You, there's no way it, it was a good shot. I'm sure that was one of a few hot takes you had as a <laughs> coach. <laughs> Just one of a few. I'll make sure I ask Willie Jones when I see him. He had a few blocks. <laughs> he wanted to shoot that three ball. That one knocked away. So I've heard. Time. So I've heard. Yeah. He's doing an excellent job, and good luck to him as they go into the semifinals against the winner of the uh, Norfolk State uh, copping game, I believe. White with three to shoot. Through the paint. Up under. Can't finish. But a complete breakdown that she was able to get a shot off. That layup attempt over the rim. The rebound being fought for and saved. No. A tippy toe on the white chalk. And we'll have a timeout taken. We'll take it with them. 
North Carolina Central leading it by two. The hustle and the intensity starting to pick up in Norfolk. We're back after this on Flow Hoops. Hey, shoot Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Coming down the stretch here in Norfolk. North Carolina Central trying to beat North Carolina A&T for the third time this season. That would be a major accomplishment for the Lady Eagles to beat the Lady Aggies three times in a row. Would be a feather in the cap for Trisha Stafford Odom. Big defense, defensive sequence right now for the Lady Aggies. Lady Eagles gonna milk the clock. They got a high post. Look for a ball screen. A two-man game right here. A free A. Atkins. Six to work. Atkins. Bounce pass to a free A. It's up and in. Bounce pocket pass that time. Atkins to a free A. Two possession game. Winters from way downtown, that one short. That was beyond NBA range. Probably not the shot that Coach Robinson wanted from Winters. Shot it a little too quick. Got plenty of time. It's over a minute. Look for Lady Eagles to run the exact same play just to the other side. They, that's what they're doing. Now you got the two-man game and a foul on Hill. Hill. Hill and that would be her fifth, correct? So, uh, that would be her fourth. Oh, her fourth. With 112 to go. Are they shooting? No, no. That's a plus for the lady. Agnes. Getting the floor cleaned up and we are ready to go. A timeout taken by North Carolina Central. What a, <laughs> I tell you what, Atkins threw a fastball <laughs> to a free A, but fortunately she caught it. She looked at her teammate and started smiling. Well, North Carolina Central will have 16 seconds to work. This is a crucial possession. You hit a three here, Coach. That could be the dagger. If you hit a three, it makes it very, very difficult. Now you're up seven. And how about this? North Carolina A&T has been held scoreless over the last three minutes. And, and it started when the Lady Eagles switched to the 1-3-1 half-court defense because before that, Jayla Jones' pack was going to work versus the 2-3 and, and the man. That one's thrown away by Walton. She's all on her own and finishes. In the job the bunny. Jasmine Walton with a big time defensive play. Atkins trapped. Gets it to a free A. Here's White near that timeline. Gets away. And will dribble out that shot clock. And now she's fouled. Still, they're not shooting. Now on the foul, the, the shot clock should go back to 20, correct? It should, but we'll have a timeout, and yes. there's... There'll be a 30-second timeout, and Leon Hill has just fouled out, so North Carolina A&T loses its best post defender for the final 44 seconds of this ball game. What a great defensive sequence and anticipation by Jasmine Walters. Walton on the inbounds played long arms, anticipated the play, studied the playbook, knew what they were going to do, sliced, stole it, got a layup to cut it to two. The most important person right now for the Lady Eagles is the young lady that is going to be required to take the ball out, that particular person.
20 seconds on the shot clock. Look for Jasmine Walton to be anticipating. Try to shoot the gap for another defensive steal. Atkins around the screen. Finds Rivera into the corner, Williams. And now White is fouled. Still not shooting. They got another 20 seconds. They're going to keep milking the shot clock until they have to shoot. Would you have fouled earlier? Probably. They, they were trying to get a steal. Yeah, but you do that for about five seconds. Exactly. I agree. And a foul is called. No, a timeout. Yeah, it was a, a timeout. And they have one left. 30-second timeout, 31.9 seconds to go. Alexis Lassiers thought that she got that ball jarred free before timeout. the timeout was called. What a way to end that this 4-5 game against two interstate rivals. A one possession game, even though it hadn't been pretty, it's exciting. Both teams shooting under 31% from the field in this one. North Carolina A&T, though, in it because they've shot 74.1% from the free throw exactly. line. Exactly, and they normally do not do that. On the season, shooting 58.9%. Deep inbounds play along the wing. Atkins. Dribbling around. Gets it to a free A. Finds White. 10 on the shot clock. Atkins. And now a bump and a foul. I think now they finally going to the free throw line for two shots. So Zaria Atkins, who shot 62.2% on the season from the free throw line. One for two today. Will head to the line. Huge free throws here. Misses the first. A three ties it. And we have a timeout on the floor. Well, coach, what a game here. You have three fouls to give before, actually two to give before you get into a shooting situation. If I'm North Carolina Central, I'm fouling after one or two dribbles to make them have to take the ball out and set up my side, you know, side out of bounds defense at least twice. And, 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 and maybe you work the clock down now, you know, six seconds or something. Now, Coach, I know that this is a rule in women's basketball that you are a big fan of the advancing of yeah, the basketball. Right, right. But my thought process still stays the same as it relates to fouling. When you look up, you have two fouls to give uh, before you have to send them to the line. And uh, and you can even send them to the line because you, you made two and you're still up one. And you've got to almost make the, the second shot come off the rim and, and get it and everything's got to work perfectly. But uh, you've got at least two fouls to give. And I, I, I wait about two seconds and I foul and then take it out again. Wait about another two. And you, 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 you're working the clock down. Let's see what strategy the uh, Lady Eagles are going to uh, apply on defense. Walton to start things off. Needs to get it in. Finds Winters. Puts it up. That one no good. Got her own rebound. Races to the stripe. Shot on the way is no good. Grabbed by Rivera. And with 9.6 seconds to go, a free throw make. 
should do it. Well, forget about my strategy. <laughs> because I thought I thought the Lady Aggies were gonna hit that second one. So far, Rivera from the line today is four for four. All she needs to do is make one. One pushes it to a two-possession game. Freshman. Six foot one out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. National Christian Academy. They're known to produce quality high school basketball recruits. Shot on the way. No good. Rusted. Freshman. Pressurized moment. Not as easy as it is doing practice. That one good. Two possession game. Nine point six seconds to go. Wilson needs to do something. Just got to get the shot off. Here's McCray for Lasears off the glass and in with 0.8 seconds to go. And that will do it. North Carolina Central has beaten North Carolina A&T for the third time this season and will advance to the semifinals for a date with number eight Maryland Eastern Shore. I'll tell you what, exciting game. Great finish, 4-5 seed, a two-point differential. Give a lot of credit to the Lady Eagles. They were a better basketball team this year than the Lady Aggies, having a 3-0 record against them. On to the semifinals are the Lady Eagles. Taking a look at some of the action from today. Exciting on both ends of the floor. The defense came up big in this one. North Carolina Central held North Carolina A&T to 29.1% shooting well, that was on the, the, the game. day. For my partner, Cy Alexander, and the rest of our Flow Hoops crew, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long from Norfolk. We're back after this with the next game on Flow Hoops.